streaming now, free on PBS Kids. Odd Squad is made possible in part by... When a child loves to learn, they have the potential to solve any case, no matter how odd. ABC Mouse Early Learning Academy is a proud sponsor of Odd Squad. Contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, Dad. I thought we were doing science stuff today. I am doing science. You're filling a jar with water. Uh-huh. Why? Well, I want you to look through this round, clear vessel and move your hand around on the other side. Okay, Dad. Whoa. <laughs> what do you see? My hand got bigger. But does your hand get bigger or does it just look bigger? What do you think? Hmm. It just looks bigger because my hand's the same size. See? Are you sure it didn't grow and then shrink right away? Ugh, Dad. <clears throat> okay, now you see this. A magnifying glass. Now try this. Pinch the magnifying glass and run your fingers across it. Is it flat? No, it's curved. Kind of like... The jar! That's pretty cool, Dad. For more parenting tips, visit scienceu.org. You are watching West Virginia Public Broadcasting. From West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the following is provided by the West Virginia Department of Education and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey everyone, it's Education Station, the show where we invite teachers from all across West Virginia to submit videos of themselves teaching their favorite lessons. In today's episode, we've got three exciting lessons about verbs, the alphabet, and reading. Well, hello and welcome back everyone. I'm your host, Alex Milanese, and for our young emerging readers, it's so important to understand verbs. So for our first segment today, Miss Gilbert has a fun way to learn about and identify verbs. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is Kelly Gilbert, and I'm a senior in high school who attends the Careers in Education course at Mercer County Technical Education Center. And today I'm gonna teach you about verbs. A verb is an action word and describes what the subject of the sentence does. So in the sentence, the dog ran, um, the verb would be ran because it describes what the dog is doing. Um, if you say the car drove fast, the verb in this sentence would be drove because it describes what the car is doing. Today I will be reading a book called Chase Wiggle Chomp. This book teaches verbs. Verbs are action words that describe what the subject is doing. Please write down all the verbs you see on every page. Tasha walks her dog Rio. Rio chases a squirrel. He pulls Tasha behind him. Milo watches a caterpillar eat a leaf. The caterpillar wiggles. It will build a cocoon and transform into a moth. Mm -hmm. 
Ella sees a fawn chomping on grass. Ella stands still. The fawn might be scared and run away. Ari plays and laughs with his friends. They bounce, throw, and kick balls. Jess reads about sailing. She imagines being a sea captain. Jess goes boating with her dad. He drives the boat fast. Tristan competes in a race. First he swims, then he bikes, then he runs. Everyone tries hard. Did you write down the following verbs? Be, bikes, bounce, build, chases, chomping, competes, drives, eat, goes, imagines, kick, laughs, plays, pulls, reads, run, runs, sees, stands, swims, throw, transform, tries, walks, watches, and wiggles. Since we read the book Chase Wiggle Chomp and now better understand verbs and what they do, we are going to sort words that are verbs and not verbs into two categories, verbs and not a verb. Is the word laugh a verb? The word laugh is a verb. Is the word pen a verb? The word pen is not a verb. Is the word for a verb? The word for is not a verb. Is the word go a verb? The word go is a verb. Is the word and a verb? The word and is not a verb. Is the word walks a verb? The word walks is a verb. Is the word plays a verb? The word plays is a verb. Is the word computer a verb? The word computer is not a verb. Is the word phone a verb? The word phone is not a verb.
Is the word to a verb? The word to is a verb. The following words are verbs. Laugh. I like to laugh when my friend tells a joke. Go. I will go to the mall tomorrow. Walks. My dog walks beside me on the leash. Plays. My cat plays with her toys. Chew. Every time I eat, I have to chew my food. The following words are not verbs. Pen, for, and, computer, phone. Now we are going to identify verbs and sentences. A verb is an action word that describes what the subject is doing. In our first sentence, my cat eats her food as soon as I put it down for her. There is one verb in this sentence. Can you identify that verb? That verb is eats. Eats directly describes what the cat does when you put the food down for her. In the second sentence, my friends run and play with me until dinner is ready. There are two verbs in this sentence. Can you identify the two verbs in this sentence? The two verbs in this sentence are run and play. Run and play directly describe what my friends do until dinner is ready. Now that you know what a verb is, you will be able to identify them in sentences that you use every single day. Thanks, Ms. Gilbert. All right, now in our next segment, we're going to hear from Ms. Johnson, who has an exciting activity that involves a scavenger hunt. So everyone needs to get ready to quickly find things around your house. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is Annie and I attend Oak Hill High School as well as the Fay Institute of Technology Careers of Education program. And we were given the assignment to do lesson plans. I have chosen an ABC recognition lesson plan as well as a counting change lesson plan. And for both of these, we're gonna need some markers, tape, an empty bin, as well as a blank poster sheet. And for the second one, we're gonna need a piggy bank or some loose change that you have, as well as some liners, cupcake liners, an empty muffin tray, and feel free to pause and grab some of the supplies. Starting with our first lesson plan, I'm gonna choose to do the alphabet recognition. And this is a scavenger hunt in the beginning that turns into a matching game. And I'm gonna ask that you take your empty tub and I'm gonna set a timer for one minute. And while that timer's going, you need to pick as many small household items as you can. And when we come back, I'll explain the lesson more. Ready, set, go. Now that we have gathered all of our items, we're gonna go ahead and make our game board, which as you can tell is just um, the alphabet and we're gonna make a column for each letter. I've got some on the front and some on the back. And once you've made this, you can start going through your items. So I'm gonna go ahead and show a few of mine. 
and then I'll show you exactly how it's done. So I grabbed a goat, an apple, a shell, a bracelet, a watch, a tape measure, and a frog. I grabbed more, but I'm only going to show these first few. So then you and your child are going to go through and recognize which, what each item starts with. And so this one is a tape measure and I'm going to try to find the letter and I'll have to flip on the back for this one. And the tape measure will go on the T. And since I flipped it over, I'm going to go ahead and see if there's anything else that goes on the back. So I have my seashell that'll go with the S. And I have my watch that'll go on the back as well. And I think that's it on the back. So then you can go ahead and place these items aside. And I'm gonna flip it back over and just go over the goat gets placed on the G, the frog on the F, the bracelet on the B, and the apple on the A. And then you'll just continue to do that with all of your items, which I have a few more, but you can choose to do as many as you want. Like I've chosen, um, let's see. I've chosen some that go on the same. Like I got a card for the C and I also have earrings for the E and an elephant for the E. So you can put multiple ones on each square. It's really just however many you want to do. Now that you've finished your first lesson plan and set that aside, go ahead and get your cupcake liners, your change and muffin pan together. Now I've went ahead and taken the markers and wrote down a certain amount of change. You can choose any. I've done 25 cents, 36 cents, 98 cents, 55 cents, a dollar, 50 cents, 62, 84, 23, 77, 15, and 42. And you can tell that I've placed them all in here. And then you're gonna help your child get out some change and go through all the different variations that you can do with each one. So I'm gonna start with 55. And to do this, I can do two quarters and a nickel. So they can place that in there. And then see if you can do two variations for each cupcake holder. And I'm gonna try to do 55 cents again, and I'm gonna do two quarters and five pennies. And I'm gonna grab one more out and put that in there. And then I'm gonna do, let's see, let's choose a bigger one, like 84. And for this, I'm gonna do three quarters, which is 75 then a nickel to make it 80. And I'm gonna pick four pennies out and place those in there as well. And like I said, let's try to get two to three variations with each one. So now I'm gonna try to do two quarters, which will be 50. And then let's do three dimes, which makes it 80 and our four pennies. And I'm sure by now your child is probably picking up that the pennies are hard to change those up. So what you do is you basically make the different changes with the bigger ones, which is your quarters and nickels. And you just continue to do that throughout each muffin. And if your child is really enjoying this lesson, you can make new ones and do those. So I'm gonna do one more. And I'm gonna do a dollar. So I'm gonna choose to do um, our first variation as two quarters. So 25, 25, 25, 25, that'll make a dollar. 
and then I'm gonna see if I can do the next variation in some dimes. And each dime is 10 cents, so I've got two, that'll make 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I'm gonna add two quarters and that'll add an additional 50 and we'll have a dollar. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson and have learned and had fun. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Ms. Johnson. Okay, for our final segment today, we've got an awesome read aloud story. Miss Morse is going to share with us the tale of Squirrel Nutkin. Let's check it out. Today I'm going to tell you the story by Beatrix Potter, who's a very famous, she wrote, she's the one who wrote Peter Rabbit and all those stories you know. But this is about Squirrel Nutkin, the little squirrel. And it's the tale of Squirrel Nutkin. This is a tale about a tail. That's using the word tail meaning story and also tale about a squirrel with a tail. A tail that belonged to a little red squirrel and his name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins and they lived in a woods next to a big lake. In the middle of the lake there was an island covered with trees and nut bushes. Sit up here. And among those trees was a hollow oak tree and that was the house of an owl who's called Old Brown. We're going to meet Old Brown in a minute. But Nutkin was very impertinent which sometimes means rude but sometimes he just was very noisy and in your face. He bobbed up and down like a little red cherry singing, riddle me, riddle me, rat a tote tote, a little mate wee man in a little red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now, I don't know what that means. We never know, find out what the riddle means, but Squirrel Nutkin tells a lot of riddles. Now in the riddle, is as old as the hills, and Old Brown made no attention to Nutkin. He just shut his eyes. Did I miss a page? I missed a page. Let's go back. I'm going to go back because we're talking about the lake. One autumn, when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the, on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all the other little squirrels made a raft to go across the river, the lake, to the, to the uh, island where Old Brown lived. They made rafts out of twigs, they paddled away over the water, and the owl went to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack with, with a large oar and spread out his tail. See, they used that for a sail. Took with them an offering of mice for the present for Old Brown. And they put them on his doorstep. Now, we're going to come over here. Oh, come on, Old Brown. So here's Old Brown. He's going to watch these silly squirrels. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels made a very bow, and they said politely, Old oh, Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? Now we're back to silly Nutkin, because he wouldn't be polite. He would jump up around and say his riddle. Old Brown paid no attention to that riddle. He just shut his eyes and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home that evening. The next morning they all came back again to Owl Island and Twinkleberry and the others brought a little mole and laid it in front of Old Brown's house. Will you favor us with a gracious permission to gather nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, started to dance up and down and he said, Old Mr. B, riddle me tree, hitty pity pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, he'll bite you. Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. He ignored this, this little squirrel. The others were out just gathering nuts. Shut the door in Nutkin's face. Presently, a little thread of blue smoke from the wood fire inside came out of the fire. Nutkin peeped through the hole and sang, a house full, a house full and you cannot gather a bowl full. Squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks. But Nuth Nutkin gathered oak apples and he put up a, a stump playing marbles with the, with the oak apples. He just wasn't doing anything the way the other squirrels were. 
On the third day, the squirrels got up very early, went fishing, and they brought minnows. And they brought those as a present for Old Brown. They paddled over to the lake and handled and landed under the oak chestnut tree with Old Brown. Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each carried a fat minnow, but Nutkin had no nice manners, no present. He ran in front singing, the man in the wilderness said to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought good, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. He just said these riddles that meant absolutely nothing, and he was just teasing Old Brown. Old Mr. Brown took no interest, not even to answer. On the fourth day, now this is the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of fat beetles, which were good as plum pudding. Each beetle was wrapped in a leaf fastened with a pine needle. But Nutkin sang as rudely as ever. Old Mr. B, riddle me be, flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in the shower of rain, put in a bag, tied with a string. Makes no sense whatsoever what he's singing. Which is ridiculous of Nutkin because he had not anything to give Old Brown. That was the fourth day. The other squirrels hunted up and down the leaves, but Nutkin gathered pin cushions and just was being silly with, with bushes. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers. Of course, not Nutkin. They had stolen it out of a bubble bee's nest. Oh my, but Nutkin slipped up and down Hum, hum, buzz, buzz, hum, hum, buzz, buzz. As I went over Tippletine, I met a flock of honey wine, some yellow, and he went on and on again. The silly, silly rhyme. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust and impertinence, but he did eat the honey. The squirrels filled their little sacks, but Nutkin went about on a flat rock and he was playing nine pins. That's kind of like bowling. He set up a, a f pine cones and then he rolled an apple and he was playing like they were bowling, having nothing to do with it. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time and they brought a new egg and, in a little basket and they gave that as a parting dish to Old Brown. But Nutkin ran in front shouting, Humpty Dumpty lies on her back with a white counterpane around his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put Humpty together to write. Now Old Brown took an interest in the eggs. He opened one eye and then he shut it. Still he did not speak. Nutkin became more and more impertinent. Now impertinent sometimes mean rude. Sometimes it just means noisy and bossy. Old Mr. B, Hackamore, Hickamore, kittens in the kitchen door, couldn't leave Hackamore. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam. But Old Brown said nothing at all. Nutkin began again. And he was doing another silly rhyme. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind. And he took a running jump right into the head of Old Brown. Okay. He was being rude. So he jumped and he jumped up at the, at the and this old owl grabbed him by the wing and he grabbed the squirrel. And he was like, caught. And I have to find my page because the other squirrels knew what was happening. And I have to find the page. Here we go. So the squirrels had run away when, they, when, the, when the owl finally spoke up. And they came back cautiously, peeked around the tree and there was old Brown sitting on his doorstep with his eyes closed as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his, under his wing. This looks like the story, at the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, impending to skin him. He was so cross because it made so much noise. But Nutkin pulled very hard with his tail, practically broken too. Whoop, I gotta put that. So Nutkin jumped out and went up out of the tree. And he went this way, and Old Brown stayed there. So here's Nutkin finally going to go home. Dashed up the tree and escaped out the window. And to this day, 
If you meet Nutkin up in a tree, ask him a riddle and he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and shout, cuck, 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 cuck. And that is the end of the story because I think Nutkin finally learned his lesson that if you tease an owl, an owl is pretty big, an owl has strong talons, an owl is going to take only so much stuff. So best is to look at an owl and say, good morning, Mr. Owl. So Nutkin got his comeuppance. Thanks, Ms. Morse. All right, well, that wraps up everything for us here today on Education Station. We want to thank everyone who shared their awesome lessons, and we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Education Station. Hi everyone, Space Gal Emily Calandrelli here. Just creating a website from space. Ever wondered who divvied out all those dot coms? Well, in the beginning, it was a woman from West Virginia. People have always been our state's best resource and young people are a critical resource for our future. We need people, specifically young women, to train for high tech, high demand jobs in West Virginia. There are job opportunities in computer engineering right now in your area. Learn how to write the code, make apps and games all close to home for not a lot of money, maybe even free. I'm coming home to West Virginia to check it all out. I'm going to show you women who are computer engineers and check out schools that will prepare you for a career. I did it. These women did it. You can do it. Look for me and the future is you. Coming this fall from West Virginia Public Broadcasting and the West Virginia Department of Education. I taught you to throw a ball, but you taught me a blanket can be a fort. And courage comes in all sizes. The world is full of possibilities, and so are you. You are watching West Virginia Public Broadcasting.